Hi, it's Alistair at Electric Scotland. Just doing the introduction to my newsletter. Uh, this time it's for the newsletter for the May the 17th, 2019. Uh, I'm noting that uh, the Brexit party has gone uh, over 100,000 members now, as paid up members. So they continue to gain momentum. Uh, there's some concern now being shown by the Labour Party as they seem to think that they're going to lose votes to the Brexit Party as well. Obviously this all, all has possible ramifications for the next general election both in Scotland and the UK, uh, the UK especially, but seeing that a third of Scots voted to leave the EU uh, I can well see the Brexit Party will at least get one seat out of Scotland if not more. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens in Scotland on that vote. Okay, so on to the new stories I have for you this week. Not a great choice, but uh, the first story I've got is the battle to save Scotland's forests from disease. It says, when I first saw the impact this disease was having, it really almost reduced me to tears. It's quite devastating, especially in the border areas, you know, so you should really have a read of that and understand what's going on. The next story is, we need new broom to sweep away parliamentary elite. This is a, a Scotsman uh, story. It says, a new broom will need to sweep clean, and that includes a clear out of the senior civil servants and officials who have treated Brexit as a damage limitation exercise and sought to keep change to a minimum. So here, here, it's great to see we're going to start attacking the civil servants because they're doing a very bad job, a lot of them. Look at Ollie Roberts, for example. He's, he's a prime example of a, a horrible, nasty civil servant that's actually trying to undermine the vote in the UK. Terrible man. He should be fired. And I think he will be if we get a new Prime Minister. Okay, next story is Brexit behind closed doors. There's been a lot of, there's been a, not a lot, but a fair bit of discussion on this. Um, and of course, if you, the link on the story goes to the BBC to view it, because if you're not in the UK, you're not allowed to view it. Typical BBC and typical rubbish in the UK. But YouTube's got a copy, so I put a copy of the both parts up in my uh, community. So if you follow the link, you'll be able to watch both parts. And certainly I think it's well worth uh, looking at. I, I certainly watch both parts. Um, next story is The Dig Uncovering Glencoe's Dark Secrets. This is archaeology and history enthusiasts are being encouraged to dig deep into the massacre of Glencoe. So that's quite an interesting story. We'll see what they find. Uh, BBC is now the enemy, declares furious Farage after TV grilling. It says Nigel Farage has angrily accused the BBC of outrageous bias after he was repeatedly challenged in an interview about his past political views. Um, it's actually from that that I actually give you the story of this week, but more of that in a wee bit. Uh, in a wee bit. The case for true independence requires Scotland must vote for Brexit. So the truth is the Scottish National Party likes to perpetuate the myth that it is the sole champion of the cause. And when we as Brexiteers start talking about independence for Britain, they get nervous. Interesting wee discussion there. Okay. Um, oh yeah, and I thought you might like this one. Ten of the best places to get fish and chips in Scotland. Golden batter, perfectly cooked cod, although the trouble is, <laughs> it's just crispy chips and plenty of salt and vinegar, or sauce if you're an East Coaster. 
who doesn't love a fish supper? Of course, in Scotland we mainly have haddock. England is where you normally have cod. So I don't know whether it was an English person that wrote this or not. We'll have to see. But anyway, uh, I think the first one's in Anstruther. I remember my fish and chip shop in Grangemouth was one of the best, won multiple prizes. Brilliant there. Okay, the next story is the case for true independence requires. Oh, yeah, sorry, I've already given you that one. <laughs> um, hundreds of, uh, of concerns raised about Scottish charities. A bit concerning this one. So, Scotland's charities have reported hundreds of serious uh, concerns about their own organisations to regulators since 2016. So, you know, that's uh, concerning, certainly. Very concerning. So, you might like to read that one. That's a BBC story. Um, Farage set sight on European election and beyond. This is from Reuters. This is Brexit campaigner Nigel Farage is one of the few politicians in Britain enjoying this month's elections to the European Parliament. In fact, he's relishing it. And that's really the, the news for this week. Um, continued discussions on getting rid of May, but, you know, I mean, whether we'll get anywhere on that, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> I, th I think the problem is to get rid of her, but who do we take, take in its place and can whoever replaces her do anything better? I, I can't see it. I think we need a general election. Okay, so on to Electric Canadian. Uh, I've got volume 25 of the Canadian Horticulture Zop, actually it's 26, 1903. And then I found Indian, Metis and Eskimo leaders in contemporary Canada. This collection of 15 biographies was prepared to illustrate for classroom purposes some of the well-known contemporary Indian Eskimo and Meti people in Canada today. So uh, I hope you might enjoy reading these stories. Then Toronto, a world and a city ethnic diversity of Toronto. So basically it's uh, showing you Toronto and talking to many people in Toronto about uh, the ethnic diversity of the, of the city. It's considered to be one of the most diverse uh, ethnic cities in the world. And then on the ethnic, I've also got something on Ethnic Canada, which is a 1986 census of Canada provided, as did all the previous censuses, a rich source of information on individual, family and household characteristics of Canadians. And uh, so I, I tell you it was interesting. You'll find in fact that British and French were the main um, mainstays of Canada but tons of other countries have come in and as you know I've been working on, on bringing some of these ethnic histories uh, to you on the site. Like I've got the, uh, the, the Dukabers, their history in Russia and their emigration to Canada. This was produced in 1903. Interesting book, uh, certainly. And they have certain religious beliefs which are interesting in their own right. So I hope you'll enjoy reading that one. Now, the Honourable Alexander Mackenzie, uh, His Life and Times by William Buckingham, who is Private Secretary, and the Honourable um, G.O.W. Ross, who is Minister of Education in Ontario. This is the fifth edition. It was produced in 1892. Um, I found when I went to put this up that I clearly got mixed up between Mackenzie the Prime Minister and Mackenzie the Explorer. So I have uh, fixed the pages um, as well as adding this book. So. So, nice to get that sorted out. Then Eskimos of Canada as a minority group. This is a, a social and cultural perspectives done in 1969. 
and so I put that up in a kind of Eskimo section or Inuit section of the site. And then more First Nations, Delaware First Nations in Ontario near Chatham. It's only half an hour down the road from me. I uh, added an article from the Chatham Voice newspaper. So I've given you a link to, to read that. Basically the, the, the church in the, in the area has uh, given over land that they owned to the, to the tribe. And then again, transition from Italian. This is the first year by Mary uh, Purpu and Stan Shapson. This is in 1974. It's, um, <clears throat> it's basically about trying to get the Italian children to speak English, essentially. And so it's going through their efforts to that, to that aim. And then Conrad Black, a couple of stories uh, from him on Mark Norman's case, Head Should Roll, and not the junior ones. This is the uh, Vice Admiral um, who's basically been prosecuted for uh, telling secrets and stuff like that, but the case is just, well, it, it, they decided not to proceed with the case, basically. So he's talking about that. And then also the President of the United States called, I was being pardoned at last. So good news for him, and uh, I think anyone that likes him is very happy for him. So that means he should be able to go to the States now. I don't think he'll make any particular money out of it, but at least he's free to move around more. Okay, so that's the Canadian section uh, for you. So we come to Electric Scotland itself. I've done a bit of work, in fact quite a bit of work, on the Fallbrook Oral History Project. You may remember some years ago and I was involved quite heavily with the Fallbrook um, Project. They were trying to take an old farm uh, and turn it into a heritage centre. They didn't get very far on that, but they also wanted to do oral histories. So they tell of Balafad and, and stuff like that in that area. And so I attended a couple of the meetings, did some photographs and video work, and uh, did a couple of their old history um, videos and put them up on YouTube. But I've done a lot more work this week um, because now the copyright issues have been have been settled, and so it's now full steam ahead to get the rest of the videos up. And I've actually got them all up now from the CDs I was given. But in fact, there are two more CDs and they seem to be only audio. So I'm going to see what I can do with those ones as well. Okay, uh, the next one I've got for Electric Scotland is the Lake of Menteith. It's islands and vicinity with historical accounts of the Priory of Inchmahome and the Earldom of Menteith. This is by A.E. E. Hutchison. Um, so it's a very interesting area of the country that, so if you come from that area or your ancestors do, you might like to read that. Then the life of a regiment is the next one I've got for you. It's the history of the Gordon Highlanders from its formation in 1794 through to 1816 by Lieutenant Colonel uh, G. Greenhill Garden. This is produced in 1901. It's in two volumes. So I've added these two volumes to our Gordon Highlanders page. So it keeps it all together. Then Beth sent in a new copy of our Best Newfangled Family Tree. I got in section two of the June 2019 issue. And then, uh, oh yeah, Brexit and India F2. I did a video about my take on Brexit and India F2 at the request of a reader. Uh, from adding a comment to my last newsletter. Basically, you just asked straight out, can you give me your opinion on um, where you think Brexit is going and so forth. So I decided I would uh, reply by doing another video, so you can watch that now. And I'll give you the link because I put it up in our community. Okay, History of the Camerons. It's with genealogies of the principal families by Alexander Mackenzie. And so I'll give you a link uh, to that if you're a Cameron. 
then um, reminiscences of childhood at Inverkeething, or Life of uh, Elizabeth by James Simpson in 1882. Basically, he's remembering when he was about 10 years old and reminiscing uh, about his time in the area. So, again, it's a, it's a kind of unique view from a 10 year old boy's point of view. Of course, he wrote it many years later when he was quite an old guy, but uh, they say as you get older, your long term memory gets better and your short term memory gets worse. So, there's something in that, I think. <clears throat> then, memorial uh, to the late Dr. James Thompson, he was assistant surgeon to the 44th Regiment. And this was in 1857. Quite a character, that certainly. Um, and you'd be gobsmacked what, what he did. Then the autobiography and diary of Mr. James Melville. See, he was Minister of Kilkenny in Fife and Professor of Theology at the University of St. Andrews. Um, and basically, is putting up his diary. Because these diaries are always pretty fascinating um, when you're looking at people that have been involved in history. And then finally, the last Baird uh, Laird of Ochmedon and Stricken, The Case of Mr. Abington by John Malcolm Bullock. This was produced in 1934. Um, the last Baird was not exactly a a great person, but it uh, is, is interesting to know that he was a bit of a gambler and uh, had a real high life. But his family came, were very wealthy. Okay, then the story this week is, uh, as I say from Camp X, is more gotcha journalism really what people want. So his two recent interviews demonstrated the differences between new and old media. It's something I, I, I've talked about before, and that's why I thought I liked the story very much. And it's a CapEx one, so I, you know, I have a lot of credibility for CapEx journalists. And I thought it was well worth you having a read at that, because I believe what they're talking about is absolutely 100%, and we need to uh, work much harder at uh, making life more, well, making life better by treating people better. So, I hope you right there enjoy the story. And that's basically it for this week. So, uh, I think we'll, we've got the European elections next week, so we'll see what uh, transpires with that. I don't know when we'll find the results, of course. It might be the, the following week. So, we'll see what transpires. Okay, so that's the newsletter for this week. Hope you enjoy it, and as always, uh, like to hear your comments on it and feel free to share it with anyone else you think might be interested. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye. Have a good weekend.